afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me out there? All right, all right. Well, it's, uh, it's May the 21st, 2019. It's uh, 6.05. We're here at City Hall, 116th West Bridge Street, Granbury, Texas. The Granbury City Council regular meeting is now called to order. I'd like to call upon Deacon Greg McAllister with the St. Francis uh, Korean Catholic Church to lead us our invocation. And we'll do the pledge with our honorary council member, Elizabeth Heil of the Acton Middle School, Granbury ISD. All rise, please. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear and wise and loving Father, first let me say thank you on behalf of all who are gathered here this evening. Thank you for the many and abundant blessings. Thank you for life itself, for the measure of health we need to fulfill our calling, for the substance and for friendship. Thank you for the ability to be involved in useful work and for the honor of bearing appropriate responsibilities. Thanks as well for the freedom to embrace you or the freedom to reject you. Thank you for loving us even so from your boundless and glorious nature. In scripture, you have said that citizens ought to obey the governing authorities since you have established those very authorities to promote peace and order and justice. Therefore, I pray for our mayor, for the various levels of city officials, and in particular, for this assembly, assembled council. I am asking that you would graciously grant them wisdom to govern amid the conflicting interests and issues of our times, a sense of welfare and the true needs of our people, a keen thirst for justice and righteousness, confidence in what is good and fitting, the ability to work together in harmony even when there is honest disagreement personal peace in their lives, and joy in their task. I pray for the agenda set before them today. Please give an assurance of what would please you and what would benefit those who live and work in and around our beloved city of Granbury. It is in your most blessed name I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the Texas flag. On honor of the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God. I would like to introduce our honorary city council member, Elizabeth Heil of Acton Middle School, Granbury ISD. Liz is a 13-year-old and serves as a student council president at Acton Middle School. She is also a member of the National Junior Honor Society and the track and cross-country teams. In addition to that, she has hand-picked to participate in advanced theater and has portrayed characters such as Tiger Lily and Peter Pan Jr. and the lead character Lizzie Landry in Lafayette Number no. One, Acton's num, yeah, Lafayette Number no. One, Acton's UL, UIL One Act Play Competition Production. The show won first place, and Liz was recognized as honorable mention for the best actress. Congratulations, Liz. Thank you. She also, yeah. <laughs> she also recently wrote her own script for a stage production called Escape and entered into a competition at her school called Script Fest. She not only won Script Fest,
but she now has had the opportunity to hold her own auditions for her show, choose her own cast as, as is she's the director, and the show will now open on May the 10th for the general public. She is also highly involved in the theater at the Granbury Opera House and has been in shows such as Shrek, the musical Joseph, and the amazing Technicolor Democoats, and A Christmas Carol. Beginning in fall, Liz will be cheering for the sidelines of Granbury High School for football games as a mem member of the JV Cheer Squad. Her parents are Russell, which are out there in the audience. Russell is her father, and Neely, the mother, with three siblings, Berkeley, Marilyn, is it? Marin and Peyton. So I want to congratulate her on being chosen to serve as the honorary council member with the Granbury City Council. So there's also a certificate that uh, will be presented to her and this certificate for her records and as uh, she applies for colleges and scholarships in the future, we'll be able to use this list and this uh, of, of her achievements. So your service to the Granbury ISD as a student leader on our campus and on their campus is appreciated. We used to wish you the best of luck and a bright future. Is there anything you'd like to say to everybody out there? Um, you're, in, you're in theater. I know there's something you want to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, a lot of people have been able to help me along, like, um, all of my achievements that were mentioned in my bio. Um, and so I just want to say thank you, I guess, to everyone that's here uh, for allowing me the opportunity to come up here today and um, just yeah thank you to you everyone. So <laughs> well she's going to help us through the consent agenda tonight and so she's going to have the opportunity to uh, sit through some uh, the presentations and uh, see what the city council is all is all about and, and she drew a she drew a big crowd tonight so look at there so, all right <laughs> at this time i'm going to step down at the podium and we're going to go through some presentations presentation is we're going, we will be recognizing the leadership Granbury, Grand, Granbury graduates of 2018-2019. If uh, all the participants want to go ahead and line up up here. And not to worry, I'm not going to be calling your name. Somebody that knows everybody will be calling those names. Okay. <laughs> Leadership Granbury is, Granbury is full of leaders in many businesses, professional groups, agencies, institutions, and all over the area. But there are some leaders that go above and beyond to invest in both Granbury and themselves. The, gradu the graduates of Granbury leadership are chosen leaders that are working to make their mark on Granbury. Leadership Granbury is an organization and a program that promotes learning and leadership to strengthen our community. The, the program creates an awareness of community resources and needs, enhances leadership skills, and helps identify future leaders. These graduates of Leadership Granbury met for 10 months, and in that time, they learned about everything from local government to small businesses to nonprofit organizations. The Granbury community benefits from the example of great leaders, and we appreciate your hard work and dedication to making a better Granbury and we look forward to seeing the future impact that you will have as you continue to invest in our community. The class leaders, Paige Hopkins and Jackie Gordon and Debbie Prince, will now introduce the 2018-19 Leadership Granbury graduates. You want to step up here and use this? Or? We are short a few tonight, but we'll start with Shane Deschatel, uh, Doby Williams, Brent Holdridge, Cherie Lowe, Bethany Warner. Um, we have several that aren't here. Um, also want to introduce our new board uh, this year. 
Um, Julia Pinnell is vice president, Holly Martin is president, and Bruce Wadley's on the board, and Diane McBride are here. Is that all that are here? And if you're an alumni of, a, of Leadership Granberry, would you stand? Let's just see how many in the group are, are alumni. Thank you guys very much. We had an awesome year this year. We learned about a lot of new things, a lot of old things, and things that you wouldn't even know. So please, if you ever think you're interested, let us know. We'd love to have you join our group. That is a great program, and they also get to, I, I believe they still get to go up in the tower. Is that right? You get to go up in the tower of the courthouse that I've, I've never been there. I guess I need to join this group and experience that, right? Is that the only way you get to get up there? Okay. All right. Well, um, you get to wind the clock. Wow. Wow, that's great. Our next presentation is we're going to recognize Jackson Bryce for earning the rank of Eagle Scout with Boy Scouts Troop 360 of Granbury. Could I get uh, uh, Scout Bryce to come up? Jackson, there you go. Well, I thought I had it up here, and I do. You know, uh, Bryce, he, uh, he received this uh, honor uh, last week, wasn't it, Bryce, I think? And I was, uh, I was out of town. And I, I called him and said, you know, I'd really like to have you out front and, and would uh, like to recognize you here in, the, in a council meeting. And so he, was, uh, he, he agreed to that and came up to the council meeting. But he's, he's received his award last Sunday, wasn't it, or last, last week, I think it was? Yeah. But... Uh, we like to honor him up here because it is an achievement that people, you know, it takes a, a lot of devotion, like takes a lot of uh, time away from him, and it's something that, uh, you know, it takes a, a commitment. And so we appreciate that. We'd like to congratulate you on your outstanding accomplishments, earning the rank of Eagle Scout. You can take pride in having earned the highest award in scouting and joining the ranks of some of our nation's greatest leaders in politics, religion, military, and business. You have demonstrated remarkable qualities of leadership and moral character for achieving this prestigious award, and I, and, and I commend you for your hard work, your dedication, and your sheer determination. Making a positive difference in the lives of others is the truest expression of leadership. May the honor of this award inspire you to a lifetime of service to your fellow citizens and this great country. I extend the best wishes to you on your special day and your continued success throughout your life. Congratulations. Come on, Bryce, 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 Bryce. <laughs> We're not done yet. And Bryce, along with that, we want to present you with a certificate, and I'll read the certificate to you. This certificate is presented to Jackson Bryce for his outstanding achievement and his exceptional leadership and citizen evidence by his attainment of the rank of Eagle Scout. It is given under my hand and the seal of the city of Granbury on this 21st day of May, 2019. Once again, congratulations.
you know, I, I was just talking to him in the crowd earlier, you know, and there's not a lot of Eagle Scouts in this area. And, and you know, we try to recognize them at the council meeting and recognize them at their uh, events that they have because it is a commitment. It, is, it takes a lot of the time to uh, to get to that rank. And so it's uh, it's on. Does anybody know how many are there actually? Do We've got some leaders out there. Is there seven, eight? Huh? Yeah, do we have some Eagle Scouts out there? One, two, three. All right, thank you. At this time, I'm going to call on Miss Julia Pinnell, and she's going to uh, give a presentation. So they can hear. What if I was to say no? <laughs> Just have love. I would be the first one to do that to her, wouldn't I, right? Okay. <laughs> Where do you want? City Manager Chris Kaufman and elected members of City Council, thank you for allowing us this special time. We said recently that May should be called Friends and Memorial Lane Month. May the 4th was the Firefighter Day. May the 11th, the Police Week event. May 27th coming up, we have the beautiful opening ceremony for Memorial Day. We invite you all to come walk with us on the Remembrance Walk, to me, the most moving event of the day. And we have our helmet back. <laughs> Say yeah. <laughs> Thanks to uh, uh, Citizens Donations and Lake Granbury Medical Center. Uh, at this time, I'd like for all the friends in Memorial Lane to come forward and stand behind the chairs, please. All the team. This is the hardest working group of people I've ever had the pleasure to work with. And tonight, we have asked Mary Mullen, who's on what we call our project committee now, to join us as she has designed the special awards that we're going to present tonight. I have asked co-chair Doug Pruitt, Rich Merrill, Chair of Firefighter Event. Vicki Connors, Co-Chair of the Police Week. If y'all come over here, please. And uh, Mickey Allen, Secretary Treasurer, to help present the awards. <clears throat> I would like to ask the following people to come forward. And this is a surprise to all of these folks. Chief Mitch Galvan. <laughs> And you can sit in the first chair. <laughs> Next, and this is a surprise, uh, city manager Chris Kaufman. What? What? Mayor Nan Hewlett. Uh, when you when they get seated, you'll notice usually it's the third man out. Well, tonight we have a fourth man out because our fourth man that is receiving an award will be coming and is a special guest. So uh, we would like, they were all surprised. Cough, uh, Chris did this for us to surprise other people, and so uh, we are going to surprise them. So at this time, uh, we will start with our first presentation by Vicki. I'm going to read this because these accomplishments are so important. I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to forget anything. Chief Galvan was sworn in as Chief of Police for the City of Granbury in August of 2006 after a five-month stint as the Acting Police Chief. Chief Galvan is a graduate of Tarleton State University and the FBI National Academy. Under the guidance and leadership of Chief Galvan, the Granbury Police Department has grown into a modern and professional law enforcement agency. Since 2006, Chief Galvan has been instrumental in the development of many important programs to include deployment of a computer-aided dispatch system for first responders, active shooter threat training for local law enforcement, and the Granbury Independent School District, the Paluxy River Child Advocacy Center, 
the Citizens Police Academy and the Citizens Police Academy alumni and the Citizens on Patrol program. But from firsthand knowledge, I will tell you, I think his biggest accomplishment. Additionally, he led the department through the first accrediting process in which the Granbury Police Department became a recognized agency by the Texas Police Chiefs Association. This process involves an in-depth review of all internal procedures to ensure the Granbury Police Department is operating according to the best practices within the state of Texas. Chief Galvan has been a dedicated public servant an invaluable resource to this community and to the citizens of Granbury. Therefore, the Friends of Memorial Lane wish to present you with this special award and say thank you from the citizens of Granbury for your dedication to keeping the all safe. Leadership is not a title or a designation. It's about impact, influence, and inspiration. Impact involves getting results. Influence is about spreading the passion that you have for your work, and you have to inspire coworkers and the citizens you lead. For your leadership as city manager, and your willingness to go the extra mile, such as making the council available for our police week event opening and closing and taking care of all the details yourself early before we got here. We present you, Chris, with this very special Friends of Memorial Lane plaque to hang in your office as a reminder of, to all of what you represent and what city leadership looks like. I think that you were one of them that knows this more than anything else. When Julia Pinnell says do, you do. <laughs> Mayor, you inspire others to have that passion for our city and to impact others to do so. We'd like to present you with this resolution given to the friends, of, uh, to the friends from the Senate floor regarding our dedication to the city and the importance of law enforcement. Please showcase this. This is so that all can see how the city joins Friends of Memorial Lane to support all of the law enforcement in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. J.C. Campbell, would you step forward, please? I'm Rich Merrill. I'm on Friends of Memorial Lane, and since I was the chairman of this year's National Firefighter Day, they asked me to give you this award. And I want to say a few words first, J.C. J.C. started on the fire department in July of 1978. That's before me and some of you were born, right? Okay. <laughs> that's, that's right, July. I didn't, it didn't say fourth, but we're going to believe you there, J.C. He is still considered an active member he just doesn't fight fires anymore or go on many calls, but he's still active on the active roster. He always tries to come to the meetings and encourages and gives good advice to the young firefighters. He volunteers on the scholarship committee. He promotes the fire department everywhere he goes. He is still a very important part of the department. 
JC also worked as co-chair of the fundraising committee with, with Julia Pinnell to raise the funds for the original firefighter site at the Jim Burke's Firefighter Memorial Park, which has now become a part of Memorial Lane. So for your 41 years of dedication as a volunteer firefighter, your participation in all the fundraising to make the park possible, and for your ongoing dedication to the Friends of Memorial Lane, our team proudly presents you with this unique firefighter plaque. time of the program we were going through the uh, consent agenda we have uh, two items on our consent agenda the one being consider approving the city council meeting minutes of april 16 2019 joint city council and the hood county commissioner's court workshop may 7 2019 special meeting and the may 7 2019 regular meeting the second item being to consider approving the memorandum between the understanding agreement between the city of Granbury and Weatherford College for the use of their campus facility. Council, you've had an opportunity to look through the consent agenda items. Are there any changes or any uh, questions or any of those items that you wish to pull off the consent agenda at this time? Mayor, I have a question. Councilman on, Allen. I have a question on item number two. Two. Go ahead. Okay. I read that over and there's no amount of money that we are saying it's going to cost us to maintain the building. I know we've been paying the last one in the, in the water over there, I think it's 25000 a year. But on this contract or what was given to us, uh, doesn't say how much money they are, it's going to cost us to budget to maintain this. Chris, can you uh, in, uh, answer sure. that or, or do we need to pull it off? I'd take it off the consent. Okay. If we need to discuss that. Yeah. So, uh, Councilman Allen, do you, uh, you want to make a motion to go ahead and pull this one off? Okay, I so move we pull it off. Okay. Second. I've got a motion to pull that one off and second. And all in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. So we, uh, we've we got the, the one item on there considering the, uh, the workshops and the meetings, and we pulled number two off. Is there any more discussion or any uh, other items you'd like to discuss, Council? All in favor of approving the, the said uh, item number one on the consent agenda item? Say aye. Or got a motion, I'm sorry. Entertain a motion for so that we, item. So we got we. a motion by Councilman Mobley. Second. And a second by Councilperson Reiner. Any more discussion on that item, Council? All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay. That is approved. At this time, we will approve the consent agenda item. Thank you. This time in the program, I'd like to recognize our young uh, recognize our young council member up here tonight with a certificate. 
This is the distinction of honorary council member and is presented to Elizabeth Heil, the Acton Middle School Student Council President. On this 21st day of May 2019, in recognition of academic excellence, leadership, and presenting the qualities of an excellent council member. Signed by Dr. Jeremy Glenn and myself, Dan Hewlett. And as we have stated, on the back of this certificate, there is a certificate also that congratulates you on being chosen to serve as the honorary council member with the Granbury City Council. If you keep this certificate for your records and as you apply for colleges and scholarships in the future, be sure to list this as one of the achievements your service to Granbury ISD and as a student council leader on your campus is appreciated. And we wish you the best of luck on a bright future. And this is also signed by Dr. Jeremy Glenn and myself, Ninho, the mayor of Granbury. So congratulations. Let's give her a big hand. study for school and all that so we're gonna I'm gonna ask my uh, uh, mayor pro tem to escort her back and uh, she's welcome to stay with us but uh, if she chooses to, to leave and go study then we'll we'll understand but thank you very much for helping us out tonight is making his way up here. We'll go ahead and open up the first deliberation agenda item, that being the item that was on the consent agenda. Number two, consider approving a memorandum of understanding and agreement between the city of Granbury and the Weatherford College for the use of their campus facility. Uh, Councilman Allen has asked to put this on the uh, deliberation agenda item, and I believe we're going to call upon Chris Coffin to give us a little more uh, detail on uh, what this is. So if you could, Chris. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Um, Appreciate the opportunity to kind of explain this item to you. Uh, you will recall that the um, Weatherford College, the city, the county, and the school historically worked together to have Weatherford College uh, campus here in Granbury. And um, recently the school went through a program and uh, wanted to divest themselves of the real estate in which the college is located along with the Decker Gym and the Decker Field and the land associated with that, and uh, the city was glad to receive that. The other as uh, aspect of this was to uh, continue a good relationship with Weatherford College and keep them in this facility, and we, we met with the Weatherford College uh, executive team in executive session and negotiated some the terms of this agreement, and they're spelled out in here that... Uh, Number one, the, the rent is like it was with the school. It's a dollar a year, beginning execution of this document, expiring in 2023. Um, Weatherford College and the city re agreed to reciprocate on indemnification and hold harmless for their respective employees and boards against any claims resulting from individuals using the facility. And the, the, <coughs> the college and the city collaborate in a responsible and reasonable manner to, to resolve any issues related to the use of the building. Weatherford College will provide daily maintenance to the building, but not limited to janitorial services. Weatherford College will maintain the building interior, including but not limited to the painting and the floor coverings. And Weatherford College will maintain a utility account with the city for the provision of water and electricity to the campus or facility. 
and the city shall maintain all fire alarm services and contracts for the building. I added that because I really felt like we needed an, a modern update fire alarm in that facility and uh, we just put it with the rest of our fire alarm services where it actually calls the fire department or the dispatch if there's a fire automatic. So uh, then the, the other item is the city shall maintain the building's major mechanical and structural integrity including but not limited to the HVAC systems, the building exterior, facade, roof, electrical, plumbing, and parking lot area. So these terms were hashed out uh, in the closed session. Put together, we sent these terms to Weatherford College and their board unanimously has approved it and there's a letter attached authorizing uh, Dr. Farmer to execute the agreement and upon your approval. Uh, Councilmember Allen asked about our cost maintaining the building. That's yet to be determined. Um, we'll talk about that at another meeting, but, but basically we've got as we talked about when we receive the property, we've got asbestos we need to look into and other items like that. But, but more than anything, this agreement shows the, um, the unwavering support of this city council towards Weatherford College Granbury campus. And uh, we look forward to them continuing to meet the needs of our students here in town, whether regardless of their age. And they run about 300 students per semester at our local campus, plus they run the AP program at the, at the high school. So there's dual credits accruing to Weatherford College uh, this semester, as well as uh, regular campus education taking place. <clears throat> Be happy to answer any questions you may have, but as far as having a fixed cost of what it costs to, to maintain and fix that facility, I do not have those numbers. Well, Councilman Allen. Thank you, Mayor. I read the same thing to myself that you just read out loud. And now, one of those items had a number on it. And I voted against the, I did not vote against the, the school taking it over. I was in the hospital at the time, or I would have. But we've got a building with asbestos. We don't know what for sure it's going to cost us. We have no budget set up for maintenance on this. And every one of these has an out for the college and not an out for our taxpayers. And I think it, you know, our budget's due in, in uh, October. And we have anything major between now and then. I know what the old saying is, well, just load it on me, we'll get it. But, you know, we're in debt pretty good. We went to $120 million in debt from 40 million. And we, we've done a lot. We've done a lot of stuff to get there. And I'm not saying it wasn't spent wisely. But I'm saying when if you or whoever present this to us, I hope the rest of the council look at it like, okay, here's a blank check. Sign it because we want to leave the college here. I think the college is great. My grandson went over there to get some dual credit during uh, school. It, it's, a, it's a great deal. But we got 300 kids go there. Not one time have we seen a financial statement from that college, what they make. So. I think, it's a, I think we should look at this and get some numbers on it before we go out here and vote on something that could hurt our city in the long run. And we'd love to have you. I'm like Chris. Here we are. We're open arms, but not an open checkbook in my part. Thank you. Good night, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Um, I just, this is what you as a council directed staff to do an executive session to put together agreement with these terms and bring it back to you so we've done exactly what you asked we we discussed the cost and knew that we didn't know how much it was going to cost to address any asbestos we knew that that's a, a looming responsibility when we accepted the, the buildings and the property and so that's where we're at and i'll be happy to do whatever you need me to do from here but i'm strictly following a ministerial function here of presenting to you what I believe you were, and all of y'all were a part of in that meeting in the executive session with the, the folks from Weatherford College. Mayor, I, I, was, in, I was in that meeting yep. in the back room, and if most people know me, I always ask, what you going to cost? Mm -hmm. Maybe I didn't ask that. Yeah, you did. I, did I, Mayor? You were there. I did, and I still want to know what it cost. I, you know, I'm a home builder. If I go out here and build a custom home, and they say, oh, just make it beautiful, what's it going to cost us? What's it going to cost to make it back like it was? 
I'm, I'm, I think we need to table it, get some firm numbers on this. We got an ounce to give us back to the school. I believe it's what Jeremy told me. Is that right, Jeremy? Say that one more time. Do we have an out to give us back to school if we wanted to? No. no. Not an out, but if at some point we don't use it for public benefit, then it would revert back to the yes. school district. Yes. So. And, and I think, Councilman Allen, if I may, like I said, we did talk about that, and I think that's how this came about, because we talked about. We did. With, but we talked about the contract of operation. And I think we're what, what we're what I'm hearing here is a an a, a, a dollar amount for demo or, or whatever we got to do to to do remodel and things like this. I don't know that we talked particularly about that in the, in the session, but we talked about the operating of it because there were some of these things on here that had a dollar amount on that has went away that Weatherford College has taken on. And that's what we were or that I was concerned about okay, is nice. making sure that those kind of things didn't fall under under the city's taking and, and paying maintenance people crews maintenance and, and and those kind of things that you see that Weatherford College is taking on. Uh, so I, I do believe that there should be a something in our budget of what that building is particularly is going to cost to uh, not to maintain because I think we've got this all identified, but to do any uh, remodeling and stuff like that. Is council any, any other council got any comments on this, Mr. Mayor? Councilman Mobley. Maybe we were at a different meeting, but I thought we, we talked about it ad nauseum about some of the costs as far as maintenance, as far as upkeep, as far as we did. Uh, the structure itself. We didn't talk about refurbing the building. We didn't talk about asbestos removal because that was going to come at a later date. And it's my understanding we have a budget meeting coming in about a month where we will discuss some of these things for future budgets. But to get us through October, I don't think it's necessary that we plan on replacing the roof the asbestos and the air conditioning units before we get it in the budget which is coming up on us quicker than we would like to think so but i was in a meeting where we discussed all of this so i'm kind of surprised by the comments uh in a way because we talked about it in fact i think that was probably the longest discussion item for the entire meeting at the last meeting if i'm not mistaken so like i said i'm just confused by this discussion Mayor, can I say something on that? Councilman Allen, go ahead. I got a question for Jeremy. Let's say we approve this tonight, <coughs> and then we do this workshop that uh, Mr. Mobley's talked about to see how much it's going to cost us to do our best and all this stuff. And we come back two months from now or three months from now, and it's $4 million. I'm just throwing that out there. Okay. We already signed a contract with them. Do we got to get bring that building up to code? They're only using one area of the building, and the, the MOU about lays out the parts right here. What, hear what what we need to do is whatever the city standards are, for our part, and and they're maintaining the interior, the lighting, the electrical. I believe uh, it, it was all laid the out. Painting on the floor. The, the painting, but I mean, yeah, any building that we have needs to be the city standards, of course. So in other words, if the the roof falls in, we're liable. Air conditioners go out. We're liable. Yes, we're going to we're going to pay for those. Receive yeah. the, the property. I, 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 I just yes. can't believe we'd go rent a house without checking it out. That's all Mr. I'm saying, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Mobley. Has nobody in this city looked at this building before today? Yes, yes. We have. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you. I have. Chris, we've had people look at it. Precious. Yes, we. Go ahead. Council, any more discussion? If no further uh, discussion, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the memorandum understanding agreement between the city of Granbury and Weatherford College for the use of the campus facility. Mayor, I make a motion we put this on a 45-day study to get all of our numbers in before we spend our taxpayer money like this. I might just add a comment, sir. Well, let's get through the motion here. I think we've got a motion from Councilman Allen, but the motion is in the form of a, a timeline. I think if you're going to have a motion as that such, it'd have to be a motion to table it to a later date and then identify okay. the later date, right? I'll make that motion. So you're going to make, make a motion to table it at a later date, and the date being next council meeting? 
Yeah, it'd be fine. Okay. If, if the staff can have us uh, June the the numbers on it. I cannot have it ready by then. How long would you need, Chris? I think I'm going to come back to you at the next meeting uh, with a budget amendment to do an asbestos survey to let us identify all the <coughs> asbestos on the whole campus. And then as we remodel particular buildings to suit your needs for future use, we will know what needs to be abated and we will have the cost then. So it would probably take about um, uh, a month and a half to, to be able to get that asbestos number. But at the same time, I have, uh, I have an architect working on pricing to uh, get Decker Gym secured with the new roof, as we discussed, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the facade that needs to be approved on the exterior of that where they tore down the other building. And again, there's asbestos, so we're not gonna be able to do the work until we remove that asbestos. So uh, met with the architect today on Decker Gym. There's, a, there, there's another way you can't, you could postpone it to a, a later date. Instead yeah, of taping like it, July the, you could, uh, July the 16th. Well, you don't even have to name a date on that. Just July 16th would be our second okay. meeting. July. July 16th. Is there any special reason for us to have to do this tonight? Well, they're planning their fall semesters you know they as like we work speak under a contract and they need they need security that they're going to be able to offer classes here and again they uh, they they offer classes here and they don't charge our local students uh, an out of district rate even though they are but uh, our our citizens are receiving a benefit for our generosity at the dice uh, they, they they get the uh, home hometown rate as if you were a taxpayer in Weatherford uh, for your classes and uh, uh, Pass that on to all the students. Well, I, I don't think the city or the school would turn them down when they come down to it. But I think it's something that we can work together. Maybe after we look at these numbers with the school and say, "Hey, look, help us out here." And if they can't, why should it be the taxpayer burden of doing this? That's my motion, Mayor. July. 16th. So your motion is to table until July 16th. Yes, sir. Table this item until July 16th. So I have a motion to table this item until the date of July the 16th council meeting. Do I have a second? Of course not. So motion fails, lack of a second. Once again, council, there's uh, this item is on the table here. I'll entertain a motion to approve the memorandum and understanding agreement between the city of Granbury and the Weatherford College for the use of their campus facility. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion by Councilman Mobley. Second. And a second, Councilman Corgan. Council, any more discussion on this item? Councilman Corgan, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Allen, how do you vote? Nay. Councilman uh, Wadley, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman uh, Mobley, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Reiner? Aye. And I'm an aye. That is, that is approved. Next, we'll move down to our number three item on the deliberation agenda is to discuss and consider pardoning, partnering with the Granbury Independent School District for a <coughs> Texas Parks and Wildlife Trails grant for property located near the Acton Middle School. And I'm gonna call upon our city manager, Chris Kaufman, to get this one started. Chris, if you would Thank please. Thank you. Um, we've been working with Acton Middle School for a little over a year discussing a trail uh, around the perimeter of their campus and at this time I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Dawson our principal at Acton Middle School to uh, lead us through a presentation that they've put together by their students and we've got some opportunities to partner with them and uh, uh, this is a great project and I hope that you see the merit of it thank you for coming thank you Mayor Hewitt City Manager Chris Kaufman council members thank you all for the opportunity to come and present uh, this exciting project that we have going on. Uh, we had the opportunity to share with our school board uh, last night uh, a little bit about this trails grant. And I don't, Carl, I don't see you. I'm missing a clicker somewhere. It's right there. Got it. <laughs> so we had the opportunity to, uh, to go through this last night and we also had the opportunity and I just want to say a big kudos to JC Campbell and very deserving of his award and so he was there last night getting recognized his family as well with for his wife's hard work in the school district as well so it's great to see JC here tonight again getting recognized well deserved um, and so this exciting project I have several people here with me tonight including a couple of students um, Walt Hartman 
from AMS, one of our gifted and talented students and outdoor learning center. Um, uh, he's on an outdoor learning center team along with Lydia Strickland. Uh, she also is a GT student and an OLC team member. Uh, also our eighth grade science teachers and outdoor learning center coordinators, Mr. Scott Carpenter and Mr. Jeremy Scott are here also. They've helped to work with our students <coughs> to uh, put this proposal together. They're working uh, in line also uh, with our outdoor learning center team, which we have a team of students from Acton Middle School that work together, create lessons. We, uh, each year we serve about 2,200 elementary students who come over from field trips, have great lessons beyond the walls of the classroom, outdoor in the outdoor learning center. And then also uh, we're partnering with the YMCA and Lisa Gossard and Holly Martin are here with us tonight and you'll hear a little bit from them as well. But if you would look at the screen and you can see actually the layout of Acton Middle School and from Google Earth. And um, what that basically is is the campus. And the bright red is uh, about a half a mile of trails that we have <coughs> developed over the last eight years or so. Uh, we have about $25,000 in grant funding from Granbury Education Foundation, uh, also with Wolf Hollow Power Plant and some other just individual grants that we've received. And so having four different classrooms out there with an archery range and it just, it, it really allows our students uh, to get outdoors and away, just away from the classroom on multiple, multiple levels. We've always wanted to expand it as much as we can. We, uh, this was all built, every bit of it was built with volunteer work and just grant money. And so we've always had that vision. And then here comes the YMCA, and it's been a great partnership with the YMCA um, and the school district with what they have, uh, what they've been able to bring to the table, not only for us, but our students, our families, our community. And so now we're looking at this blue line that's out on around the outskirts of, of the campus. And what that basically is we're looking at is like as a, a trail, uh, a, a, I guess a running track or, or a, a trail similar to what we have here in Granbury. A couple years ago, Chris Kaufman was on the Leadership Granbury and came through to, to see the Outdoor Learning Center. We got to share with him and, and others. And uh, he mentioned to Mr. Carpenter, hey, why don't y'all consider this Texas Parks and Wildlife grant? This is a great funding. And so for a couple of years, we've just really been brainstorming some different ideas. But our ultimate vision, I mean, ultimately, it'd be fantastic to be able to tie in a trail from Acton Middle School all the way through town to tie into downtown with what we already have existing. That would be fantastic. But I'm gonna let the, a couple of my students um, present first and let them share some ideas. So Walt and Lydia are gonna come up here and, and <coughs> share some things with you guys from what they kind of worked through from their ideas and from their perspective as students. All right. Um... Uh, I'm going to be talking about the benefits of this trail for uh, GISD. So uh, the first benefit we have here is continuing a sense of community uh, by GISD. So basically what this is saying is uh, this trail wouldn't be uh, an idea for only the school district, but it'd be um, open to the community and we wouldn't you know, only focus on the schools. Uh, the second benefit would be city trails from downtown give safe access to students at GMS but this trail could all out and combine with future development for AMS students to have similar opportunities. So uh, some people know that there's a trail, a uh, walking trail, any running, that, uh, that goes in front of GMS on, on that side of town, uh, kind of by that airport over there. So uh, this trail could allow uh, people living on this side of town uh, not to have to travel over there uh, to that trail over there or have to uh, walk or run in their neighborhood if they wanted to, you know, get out and have more time outside, they could come to this trail with their kids or whatever um, on this trail as a different opportunity. Uh, the next uh, benefit would be to expand outdoor education possibilities for GISD. And as he, uh, as Mr. Dawson had <coughs> mentioned, uh, we have the OLC already, uh, which we teach younger children. And uh, sometimes our classes uh, may go out there for a lesson, but uh, this could also expand opportunities for other uh, schools in our district, such as GMS, the high school, or the elementary schools, and, of course, AMS. And uh, another benefit would be the AMS uh, cross-country uh, team has a safe place to train. So uh, their uh, places, you know, they could train would be the track, which, uh, one, that, you know, cross-country doesn't, on doesn't only run on that track. You know, they run on trails throughout places. 
Uh, their other o only option uh, would basically be the road. And um, as some people know, that James Road over in front of AMS is kind of a tight, windy road over there, and it could get uh, kind of tight with uh, traffic. So that wouldn't be uh, much of a great place to try and with the cross country. So we think that trail would be a better opportunity for runners to go on to train for cross country. You know, it would be uh, very similar to the uh, tracks that they run on at meet. And then uh, the last one would be a possibility of fun runs to raise money for GISD programs. Um, we've had uh, fun runs in the past on the OLC trails that we've already had, uh, you've seen on the map that we have. Um, and um, uh, before that, uh, we've said that the runners experience on the mulch, the trail on the OLC is mulch, and it's kind of the wind, there's windy paths in the OLC, it's not really much of a fun run place. So we think that uh, this new trail uh, would be a better place for the fun, run to, fun runs to happen. And these, couldn't only ha these could happen for the AMS, GMS, and like I said, the elementary schools and high school. Yeah. Okay, so benefits for the city and community. This would be a community recreation area for people living on the Fort Worth side of town. It is a great outdoor space for families and ADA accessibility. It is an opportunity to have an outdoor workout space for Granbury. Mainly, there is only indoor workout facilities. It could be a par larger part of the Granbury Masters Trail Plan, and it would also extend the footprint of the YMCA for the community. Thank you for having us this evening. Um, one of the wonderful things, as Mr. Dawson stated, has been the partnership that has grown with AMS and the YMCA. It is something that has grown organically to include the children and families from AMS, um, which we treasure, and we hope that this would allow us to benefit on both sides of the street. Um, it would give us the ability to enhance the small group wellness opportunities for families, seniors, individuals, and youth. The trail will tie into the crosswalk, um, which will allow for safer travel to the YMCA and it from the YMCA. It allows an outdoor track as an alternative to the road. Uh, if, as the student said, running on James Road can be a little tricky, um, or the indoor track in our facility. This will also allow our YMCA members to enjoy the nice weather, especially like on a day like today, and be able to work out at the same time. And then as the student said it would allow us to extend our footprint and the opportunities for those of us who have members at the YMCA. Just for the council's knowledge, um, our membership base is roughly 10,000 people. Um, so um, it's a large group of people that we have the opportunity to serve um, through our YMCA. So last night we were able to present the benefits of GISD and so I'm just going to turn it over to City Manager Chris Kaufman since he's been working directly with us and Dr. Glenn met with us with Randy Leach and, and our team here and so uh, Chris I'll just let you share a little bit more if you want to. You bet. Uh, this this began like I said quite some time ago and we were talking about um, creating this, this new trail system. Can you hear me? Yep. And um, um, anyway, through various meetings, they developed these, this slideshow and this, uh, these pictures of, of what it could look like. We, I introduced them to our grant writer, Jake McAdams. Uh, I invited Jake here, but I think his schedule would not allow him to be here. Oh, there he is. He made it after all. Um, come on up, Jake. I'm going to ask you a question here in a second. Uh, but the bottom line is, is we were sitting around talking at our last meeting, and the question came up is, you know, number one, the city's interested in, in, in extending our trail system uh, throughout the city already. That's just a known fact of, of park life. And the Saratoga subdivision has a trail that's going to be going in there. And uh, anyway, so there's going to be that neighborhood with about four to 500 homes with a walking trail. And ultimately, we need it to tie into the school system so they can walk to school. And uh, so this, this is kind of a... Uh, a friendship deal where we're, we're working along side by side with the school to figure out how to meet the needs of our community and uh, anyway we got to talking and I realized it kind of it kind of clicked because we were talking about you know probably the city would need to contribute some financial uh, support the YMCA would probably need to raise some money the school would need to kick in some money 
And and I, I got thinking, well, it's a grant. We could use the, if if we if the city would host this application, and the school would give the land to the to the city on a grant application, then there the match for that would already be met, and the rest of the grant could be used for construction, and and, and administration and engineering as well. So <coughs> we don't know what the price tag is on this. But we're asking uh, for the council and the school board to let us move forward and put together the grant application. Let's see what it costs to do this. Let's see how, how we can raise the money. The application is not due till February. Is that correct? And uh, is it a $200,000 grant award? So uh, back in the fall, I, <coughs> I did speak with the school about this project possibility. Uh, there were a few reasons that it kind of got pushed until this springtime. Back in the fall, one of the possibilities that we considered is actually applying for two grants um, based upon uh, stuff going on at Parks and Wildlife. They may actually hit relatively simultaneously. And so one grant we could apply for would be the Trails Grant. And so that is uh, a total project grant of about $250,000. The grant portion of that would be $200,000, uh, especially for the fitness equipment and, and some other components. Uh, the, the smaller trails area, we may also consider looking at a small communities park grant, which it's possible that uh, they are going to revise the deadlines, and that may be due at the end of this calendar year. Uh, with that grant, we could uh, look at the fitness equipment as well as the balance of the uh, pavement cost, the, the trails cost in that. That is a 50-50 matching grant. Looking at some rough numbers back in the fall, especially if the property is donated to the uh, city as, as part of that match, I think that's going to substantially help out on whatever the match dollar amount is. So depending on how it all shakes out, this, this could be an extremely beneficial project for both the city as well as the school and the ISD as a whole. Uh, and so we could theoretically apply for, you know, uh, what is that, about $275,000 a grant, or we could apply for two hundred. dollars There's a few different ways that we could uh, mix it up depending on how the city, the school, the ISD wants to go on this. Yes, sir. Thank you. And so, you know, we're not talking about applying <laughs> for a grant quickly. We're talking about putting it together and then bringing it back to the school board and the, and the city and, uh, and seeing what we come up with in the next few months. I think it's a great idea. Staff recommends giving us the latitude to move forward. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Council, you got any questions for uh, any of these folks, uh, the school, uh, Jake, uh, or Chris? Mayor, I want to say, Councilman thank, Allen, I want to say thank the young people for getting involved. Yes, sir. That's Thanks, really great. great. Y'all did a great job, every both of you. <laughs> I know I sound like a grumpy old man up here, but I really love children. I got grandson. <laughs> Council, any more discussion? I'll, I'll echo that. I don't know what Mr. Dawson's doing out there, but he's turning out actors, engineers, speakers, future city <laughs> leaders, athletes. Uh, that's you got a great program out there, Jimmy, and, and uh, we hear it all over town. <laughs> Trouble is, they don't want to leave that school. They want to stay right there. <laughs> <laughs> Council, you have more discussion on this item? If there's no further discussion, I will entertain a motion to consider partnering with the Granbury Independent School District for a Texas Parks and Wildlife grant for property located near the Acton Middle School. So moved. And I have that motion by Councilman Mobley and Councilman Wadley. Council, any more discussion on this item? If none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. That is approved. We look forward to seeing the process. Our next item is a joint deliberation with the Planning and Zoning Commission. This is not a joint meeting. <clears throat> We've asked the, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission to join with us so that if there's any questions on this item or uh, concerns, that we make sure that they get uh, uh, answered at this, uh, at this meeting. But it's actually a joint uh, 
it's not it's the planning and zoning commission to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of rewriting the city development code to include the subdivision ordinance and zoning ordinance in order to allow for planning and zoning commission to have final approvals on all plats submitted to the city of granbury and revisit article four permitted uses of the city of granbury zoning ordinance considering the requirements of the sup for each of the itemized uses tabulated a quorum of the planning and zoning commission will be present tonight they are present tonight so with that said, I'm going to kick this off with uh, Chris Kaufman to uh, give us a staff report on this. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Planning Zoning Commission. Appreciate y'all coming to this special meeting tonight and uh, enduring our length because I had no idea we were going to still be having you up here at this time. A lot of great presentations. A lot of, a lot of good <laughs> stuff going on. Um, what, what our council has <laughs> asked us to look at is internally figure out a way to be developer-friendly and right now, um, as you're aware, uh, we currently have the, the Planning and Zoning Commission reviewing all plats and subdivision uh, projects and uh, making recommendations to the, to the City Council for final approval. Uh, the, the state law, when you create zoning uh, or planning and, and zoning commission, when you, when you create that, you've, uh, uh, it establishes the, in the powers of Planning and Zoning Commission to approve those plats. However, if the city council wanted to pass an ordinance, which we did in Granbury at some point in time, to where the planning and zoning would make recommendations and the council would have the final say, um, that's what we did. And so we're asking the, the PNZ to take this back to, to their committee meeting and look through that uh, law, have, have the city attorney help you, uh, have the, our staff help you with, with any discussion and questions. But ultimately, um, there's, there's about a, a, a delay of a permitting that goes on because of our duplication of services that you guys are adequately capable of taking care of. This council has confidence in you and, and has seen your judgment in the past and appreciate you. And uh, at the same time, they're looking at our town is growing and we, we have a, a transition going on here where where their, their agendas are getting longer and longer and longer because of the growth that's occurring. And some of the things are just ministerial in function, um, like, the, like the housing project that was on the last agenda. They met every requirement in our code, and if we would have uh, uh, not approved it, then we would have could have been taken to court and made to approve it. So it's a ministerial function a lot of times. Where there's a zoning issue, we can't delegate that to the... <laughs> to the Planning and Zoning Commission, we still need your recommendation on zoning issues or plan developments. That would still need to come to the council as well. But that's kind of a vision that, that's been articulated among the council at, at our strategic planning cycle. And, and then also we wanted to uh, revisit all the, the SUPs. If you look in our chart, it seems like every time someone's trying to put in a, a business, they're having to issue an SUP. And I think what... what, um, what Kind of got my attention was uh, an upholstery shop. Uh, whenever we went through a process to issue an SUP for a golf cart business in a strip center, uh, we later found out that they would like to do upholstery work, and I told them well, that would take a complete separate SUP. And so <laughs> they'd already been through four months of uh, of uh, tribulation and. Uh, and so they didn't. They chose to keep that upholstery function at their other location in Fort Worth. So uh, anyway, we would. We that's all we're trying to do tonight is let the council participate in this conversation with y'all if you have questions and and uh, kind of get a good feel for what we'd like for y'all to review. We're not telling you to go back and change things if you, whether you want to or not. We're asking for your input and we're asking for your advice on on whether this is a wise thing for our community to do and to revise those SUPs where possibly we can get rid of some of them to where they could be permitted uses instead of uh, an SUP. I guess a good example is the uh, uh, one of the, the recent ones on the square, um, a, a business came in need an SUP and they literally are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars and they get permission to operate their business for three years out of the deal. So, you know, it, it needs to be a, a little more secure footing to be able to do your business if you're going to invest a lot of money that you don't have to turn around and, and, and come back and say, well, I did good. Will you please let me go again, you know? And so it needs to be considered 
a vesting interest where if it's, it's either permitted or it's not. And, and there are cer cer certain cer situations where an SUP should be required. We can all agree on that. And, but there's more than one way to uh, deal with an egregious uh, person in our, in our community that's not taking care of business. You know, if, if besides having an SUP and, and pulling their CEO, we can, we can deal with those through code enforcement and things like that. So uh, just something to think about. And I know Scott is here and is available to answer questions as well. But we'll turn it over for you all to discuss amongst the council and the PNZ <laughs> Thank you, Chris. That's, and he's exactly right. The council is, is wanting to see what it looks like on, on the uh, planning and zoning's end of it or, or what they think it might look like. And there's also been uh, several cities we've identified that do it as such, so it might be something we want to, to uh, discuss with those and see uh, the things that they ran into. We even talked about, you know, what the cost would be for training and, and those kind of things. You know, we just want to have something that the council can look at or, or even if uh, it's something that... Uh, that would fit Granbury, you might say. So, and like I said, we'll turn it over to uh, if there's any representatives or anybody who wants to just speak. I think they've got you've got mics down there. So if you guys want to uh, ask the council for maybe some clarification or anything like that. Uh, thank you, Council, Mr. Mayor, Mr. City Manager. Um, as Chris said, this topic came out of the uh, Strategic Council retreat back in February. Um, and like Chris said, I recently spoke to that same tenant on the square. Um, he volunteered some information to me and just basically said the process takes much longer here than other places. Uh, some concern about the delay. Uh, obviously, if you're not open, you're not generating a profit. Uh, so they're foregoing some, some uh, profit opportunity. Uh, the city planning department did a survey of 18 cities, um, somewhat split uh, relative to how to best navigate, you know, through this issue for the city council and the city. Um, and I think, as Chris said, you know, I've been, I'm, I guess I'm the shortest uh, serving member on planning and zoning, but uh, we really have a very qualified and engaged group of people. Uh, great planning commission, great city planning. Um, Rita does a fantastic job as our chair. Uh, and as you all know, uh, PNZ Commission was nominated and voted on by council, uh, and we are a singular focus group. Uh, so that's, that's all we do. And for those of you who attend city council meetings, uh, you see the broad array of topics that city council takes on every two weeks and the preparation that it takes to uh, put those meetings together and come prepared. Um, I guess the question I had sort of rhetorical at this point is, you know, how many instances have there been where council has overturned uh, planning and PNZ on any of the SUPs or final planning? So if we're just, you know, if there are some instances, you know, we should certainly look at that. But if we're checking the checker and we pass it through, and as Chris said, it's more ministerial than anything, um, we're, we're kind of jamming it up in my opinion. Uh, the other option would be to, you know, take a look at both uh, set up a monitoring program perhaps for six months, come back and pull some uh, items up and get feedback from council in terms of how they would have voted. Um, and I do think in closing it's an opportunity to streamline our process, uh, continue the same good decision making that we've had in an expedited fashion, saving time for the applicants, as Chris pointed out, as well as city council and city staff. So thank you. And also, if any council, if council members have any thoughts you want to throw in there, just go ahead and. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman I, Allen's I, got I agree with, with uh, Mr. Vail there that I hear it all the time. We're used to not as bad before Chris got here. It got worse before <laughs> Chris got here, I should say. That <laughs> it takes forever to get a permit. It takes forever to do this. You've got to have this done. Uh, I agree with Mr. Vail. I think we ought to look at it on six months or nine months or a year. Uh, Chris, you probably got more say in that or know more about it than we do. The other thing is, question, and I think I, my hearing aid didn't hear it right, but what happens if they say they vote against a zoning or something in, in a permit, permit, I'm sorry, and those people come to us and say, hey, y'all put that on the agenda. I need to get this done. 
can we override them at that time, or is it over with whenever they vote? We, we, and I don't think we can answer that one, but, but you know, that's what we're going to do, though. We're going to try to identify those type of uh, problems. problems right? yeah. So a zoning issue would always come before the it council. Comes before council. So Still. if it's a planned development or a zoning issue, by law, it has to come to the council. So that, that, that's going to take a whole lot of, of what they're doing to us anyway. Exactly. But where it doesn't require special zoning or an SUP, um, it should be ministerial, and we're going on with that. So I, I think the question Rita was going to answer is, um, is there an appeal process for an applicant for an SUP? Yeah, maybe that's what we all need to. Yeah, that's what we're asking. Work with staff and yeah, the city together. attorney and and work those things out because we don't have the answers tonight. I don't think. And, and I think Scott has a uh, has a uh, some type of a uh, agenda you might say for the. Uh, I, I guess it might be for the other Scott. Am I talking? To, you might want to talk a little bit about that, but uh, something that uh, you're going to put together so that the P and Z can have it to work off of. You might say. Scott. Sure, if uh, Scott Sopcich, Development Director for the City of Granbury. So we'd be more than happy to piece together something uh, that we can work with with PNZ uh, if they want to go forward with this. Um, so uh, one thing that we probably want to do is just look at model cities and get some feedback from them on making sure that uh, the process is very clean and efficient and how the plat applications, if they are in fact improved, approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, don't get ahead of any kind of zoning issue or site plan issue or PD, with ha which has a development plan with detailed site plan elements. Uh, and that ties, has a good marriage between the plat and the, and the zoning aspect of it. So um, with the green light, that's, that's our charge as city staff is to get some of those model ordinance communicate with those cities that have really refined this and built the best ma mousetrap possible and present it back to P and Z. Um, and if they embrace it back to city council. So Scott, a lot of times uh, on our agenda, we'll have the, uh, for, for first thing, this is the first time I've heard that it was not PDs. So, um, but which is fine because most of our new developments that come in are now under PDs. I, rarely do we have a sizable development anymore that's not under a PD. But the PD comes, and sometimes the final PD and the plaque came at the same time. Same time. So I'm not really sure if the PD is still going to see the council. And we did the plaque. Where did that really save time for the developer? So it, it, it would be fairly efficient if, if the property is still in survey and we have a preliminary plat and a PD and they track the entitlement and the preliminary plat. Um, you would approve the preliminary plat uh, if you have full approval. The, the PD, the entitlement side, would go to the city council. They would still have to circle back around to the final plat and do their civil plans. Uh, but they would still have their entitlement in place, which is to some degree, as we've seen with some recent projects tied to their financing, is their entitlement side. Um, the, one of the problems that we see, at least from my vantage point, is when we see a pre-platted piece of property, a replat, where you need full civils and they don't have the land use entitlement, and they're going through a replat process, that's where we need to research is how do cities best manage this in order to efficiently handle these types of products where we have a replat application. There may not be a variance associated with this. It's more ministerially oriented. And you have a zoning case that's tied to that replat that has some level of discussion at the legislative level, um, not getting the plat ahead of the game. What, is, what does that mean? Does that mean we conditionally deny it? Uh, again, we need to see uh, from other cities how they best manage it and get some feedback from them. And, and that's exactly what we're asking. Is per, you know, we just want to know the advantages and disadvantages the council was of what this looks like. That's, you know, that's the starting place for this. And it, and it may take several months. But yeah. Freedom. Good question. Freedom. Just one other thing. I mean, I don't think anybody on P and Z, we may need to be a little bit more thorough in what we do just if we're the final word. But I think my main question is really to council if they're ready to relinquish control sure. on a controversial development 
because in the past, very the recent past, we've had some controversial ones that have been decided at council. So my question would be, are you guys really ready to relinquish political control over some of that stuff? That's why we're asking for it. So, that, that's, yeah. that's, that's my, I, that's so I think it's really more of a council's decision yeah. if they're ready to let that go. Don't have it. <laughs> I just want to make a comment. I mean, if you're going to relinquish the control, I mean, that would streamline the, the process. Right now, I think there's a three approval process, and I'll tell you why I say three approval. First, they got to go through the city. Once the city, once they meet all the city requirements, uh, the city staff is say, yeah, you're good. We make the recommendation. Uh, or they make the recommendations to the planning and zoning. Then they come to the planning and zoning. We get, the, we get the approval. And then our approval has to go up to city council. And then city council gives another approval. I mean, that's a three-part process where you could just have a two-part process where it just comes to us and it stops there. Um, what could be a negative effect is that if our decision is not final, then you're going to have to deal with the consequences of people coming back and saying, hey, I disagree with planning and zoning. Now let's put that on your agenda. So you're still facing the, uh, the issue. So you could either give us the control and the authority to make the final decision, or you can just deal with the issue. And, and if it's not approved to their liking, then you're just going to have to deal with the deliberations of what they're what the decision was made at uh, planning and zoning. And, and these are, I, I hate to keep bringing us back in here because we're getting up to where we're actually discussing the advantages and disadvantages right now tonight, and that's really not what the intent is. And that's exactly what we expect to hear or to see, you know, when you guys, after you talk about it and, to study and, and, and bring it back to the council for consideration, we want to know the advantages and disadvantages. So I don't think we we're going to get all that out. I mean, you, you actually touched on a few of them but tonight we just want to uh you know have the the council to yeah you know we're, we'll go back and look at this and see what the advantages and disadvantages of doing it this way go ahead you had made mention about the, if the p and z wish to move forward is that a formal motion that has to be made no 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 or that's they, not a meeting Okay, I, yeah. as a general contractor with 30 years, uh, I see a lot of redundancy that we do with council, and I would, I would make a, uh, I'd be all for moving forward with reducing another step of uh, paperwork submittal and uh, and voting. So. Okay, very good. So, if there's no more discussion, then we'll we'll look forward to hearing some, uh, you know, from the count from the council on the. Uh, what their maybe their recommendations are, or whatever. So we'll plan to schedule some work sessions with the PNZ and uh, hopefully uh, look at all the nuances of other cities and bring that forward to PNZ. Right. Get the pros and cons and have a report back to council and okay. maybe have another joint meeting at a later date. Thank you. And thank you, Scott. And thank you guys for what you do for us. Thank you very thank much. You. Yeah, you can sit down. <laughs> <laughs> you can be dismissed. Thank you all so much. Just leave. <laughs> Our next item on the agenda is to consider approving the request from the Granbury Parks Board to proceed with a landscape project at Lambert Branch Park. Uh, a quorum of the Granbury Parks Board may be present, and I'm going to call upon Chris Kaufman to give us a staff report on that one, please. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to our Parks Director, Aaron McLean, and I believe he's got some recommendations from the Parks Board. Miss Kate, I see her coming. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Mayor, Council, Mr. Manager. Um, I'll give a little bit of back history to some of the newer uh, council members on, on Lambert Branch Park. Um, some people don't even know where it's at. It's just, just north of us here. Um, there's been lots of talk about our trail system, um, continuing that trail system with the school, and the, our current trail system goes right by this park. So back in 2015, um, there, was, there were some old structures removed from this property, so it created a void. And at that time, um, the current council, or the council at the time, excuse me, asked uh, for the parks board 
to come to them with any recommendations they may have in the future um, to alter that master plan that was uh, that was changed that evening. So, uh, well, the board has worked for some time on different ideas, trying to see what our community needs, um, how to to add to that that area of town. So there's always been the thought of landscaping, um, kind of leaving that area a more natural area. It is surrounded um, on two sides by water. It runs right by the hike and bike trail. Um, the newest bridge on the trail system spans the creek at that park. We have the Neely House that's available for rental um, for functions. There's a new addition of the floating um, dock uh, for boats there. So um, it took some time to come up with, a, with some plans that include um, sidewalks, kind of a winding sidewalks, uh, incorporated with landscaping and some, some play structures. But they did, uh, they were very specific wanting to keep this area um, somewhat naturalized to blend it with, with the surroundings. So I believe we've got some slides here. So this is a plan of showing the sidewalks and play areas. So the, the rounder areas with the solid black lines are areas that we would hope to have some, some play structures, some land, um, and then the other areas would be landscaping. And of course, the, the wider area is a six foot wide um, concrete uh, sidewalk. <clears throat> this is uh, just a rendition of some landscaping. So you can go back and see it's just the same site filled in with, with landscaping and trees. And we would want to use some native and naturalized um, trees and landscaping. And in a moment, Chairperson Jean Kate's going to talk a little bit about the financial aspect of it, and she may mention the uh, our local gardening club as well. So. I mentioned they were very specific on keeping it native or naturalized and to blend with the surroundings. These are examples of, of uh, play features. Um, most of these are made, some of them are made from resin material or a combination of uh, fiberglass and concrete. <coughs> so they really don't want traditional swings and traditional slides. But these are some examples of things, new play structures. And of course, there are some areas with slides, but these are, um, it's called tree line, and it kind of blends with the area, made to look like logs or rocks. And as you can go back and see, there are um, like turtles, um, frogs, and things of that sort. So in the landscape areas, that's the idea, is have large, uh, the fake boulders for climb, the kids to climb on, and then the large animals and then also some of the uh, play features. Um, we did not have any pricing available on the play features. Uh, if, if we're going to reach out to other groups and organizations, as Gene will uh, go into more detail on, we would like to give them the opportunities to, if they're going to partner with the city perhaps, to have them involved in the selection of this. We do have some pricing on, on the sidewalks. That's about uh, six thousand square foot of sidewalk uh, that's uh, and and the landscaping runs around uh, forty five thousand dollars we would do the landscaping ourselves in-house um, we could do the irrigation as well we would plan to do bubblers to the trees and then drip irrigation to all the beds we wouldn't have any any overhead <coughs> um, irrigation so uh, at this point I'd like to have Jean, come up, and then I'll be glad to answer any questions also when she's finished. Thank you, Larry. And you know, of course, and I keep telling you, you've got a jewel in him. Uh, at the uh, February 11th meeting of the Park Board, we had decided the parks are so important, and they're vital to not only the people who live here, but our visitors to come here. And I think that our parks have become a jewel in the crown of Granbury. Lambert Branch Park is absolutely precious. It's a very natural setting with, as Aaron said, the water on two sides. 
The city is always being requested for money. This time, we would like the council's permission to uh, start a, a group to fundraise through the civic organizations. We have spoken to the Optimus, the Beautification Council, the Kiwanis, and Rotary. And they would like to meet jointly and see which parts of the project that they would like to undertake and see how much money we can raise going through that way. But we do know we have to have the city's permission in order to do any fundraising. And that's what we're requesting for this evening. Thank you, Gene. <coughs> Council, do you have any uh, questions for Aaron and Gene or the city manager? Hearing none, I'll uh, entertain a motion to uh, to approve the request from the Granbury Parks Board to proceed with a landscape project at the Lambert Branch Park. So moved. I have that motion by Councilman Allen. Second. And a second by Councilperson Reiner. Council, any more discussion on that item? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. That is approved. Thank you. Thank you very much, Good gentlemen. Good we love our parks. Our next item is to consider all matters incident and related to the assurance and the sale of the City of Granbury, Texas Combination Tax and Revenue Certificates of Obligation, Series 2019, including the adoption of Ordinance Number 1931, authorizing the assurance of such certificates of obligation. And I'm going to turn this once again over to Chris Coffin, our city manager. Thank you. Um, as your memo might remind you, back in April we passed a resolution to, uh, with the intent to issue these certificates of obligation for the purpose of buying these two firefighting pieces of equipment. One is a pumper truck and the other is a, a ladder truck. Uh, we, we went through the process to find the best sort of financing and at this time I will turn it over to our finance director Ava Gregory and our financial advisor Joey Durker. Y'all come on up and tell us all about it. I think we've got some great interest rates to share with you, Council. Yes, uh, good evening, Mayor, Council, City Manager. Um, I wanted to um, basically, um, as Chris introduced the item, this is the final step in the approval process to issue the financing for the two fire trucks uh, the Council approved during our budget process. Uh, at our last meeting on April 2nd, or the previous meeting on April 2nd, Council approved a resolution with their intent to issue these uh, bonds to finance the two fire trucks. The, at that point, it was determined that the total amount to be financed would be $2,210,000. Uh, $210, and that the financing, the terms would not be more than 10 years. In the meantime, we have worked together with Hilltop Securities, our financial advisors, and um, worked on um, uh, issue, uh, securing a financing for the fire trucks. And we are um, happy to present that we were able to secure very low interest rates. Since uh, our um, financial advisor from uh, Hilltop is here, I'm going to let him also uh, update you on the terms. And this is Joy Durker with Hilltop Secure Securities, but I'll be here if you have any questions. Good evening. Uh, this is a simpler transaction than what we typically <laughs> undertake here, um, but it is a certificate of obligation issue. Uh, we issue one of those about once a year. Um, so as Ava mentioned, it's in the amount of $2,210,000. Uh, these COs are being placed directly with Amogy Bank at a rate of 2.38%. Uh, final maturity is August 15, 2029, so it's 10 years. Um, these COs may be repaid from fund balance or from ad valorem taxes. I believe it's a budget amount from fund balance. Um, these COs are callable anytime, so if you'd like to pay them off early, you are welcome to, um, though I don't see you getting under 2.38%. Um, and finally, uh, closing is scheduled for June 18th, um, so of money in the bank that day. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Councilman Allen, how's your heart? My heart? Well, you heard that number, 2.3 billion. <laughs> I like the interest rate. <laughs> I was thinking, though, we were going to take some funds out of uh, some department that wouldn't use all of it to help us on this. We, we did set aside <coughs> the, the, the first year payments with general fund revenue. Okay. 
I sure did. And when will our first payment be due? Um, about six months after the. Uh, well, I'm reading August the 20th. Oh, that's about six months after the resolution. First payment will be February 15, 2020. 2020. First interest. We got over a year. February, yeah. Good job. Council, any more uh, discussion on this item? Thank you. So, more, in no more discussion, I'll entertain a motion to uh, to uh, approve the uh, City of Granbury Texas Combination Tax and Revenue Certificate of Obligation, including the adoption of the Ordinance Number 1931, authorizing insurance of such certificate of obligation. So moved. And I have that motion by Councilman Wadley. Second. And a second by Councilman Corgan. Any more discussion, Council? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. That is approved. <coughs> Our next item is to consider adopting resolution number 1915 regarding the petition of Red Cedar LLC to have their property included in the city's <coughs> three-year municipal annexation plan. And I'm going to call upon Chris to give us a, a report on that and so kind of tell us how we got to where we're at here on this. Thank you, Mayor. I think I will defer to the city attorney. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think he saw that coming. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, Mayor, Council, for your consideration is the petition of Red Cedar LLC. Red Cedar LLC is the owner of certain properties uh, in the proposed annexation section number four. Uh, they have filed a petition pursuant to section 43.052 I of the Texas Local Government Code seeking to be um, accepted from the current proposed annexation and placed into a municipal annexation plan with the city. Um, they also cite in their petition that uh, they, they, the reason for this request is because they believe that no reason exists under generally accepted municipal principles and practices for separately annexing these areas. I will tell you that you, you have two options. You can accept the petition and we can create a, a new municipal annexation plan and place them in that and consider annexation in three years. Um, or you can deny the petition and the, the annexation will move forward as is. In addressing their two issues, the, the first being the generally accepted um, annexation plans and principles, first of all, it, it's been stated in both public hearings that the, the and, and restated that the reason for this annexation specifically does fall within those principles <laughs> and practices. Um, the reason that this is this is proposed annexation is occurring is the management of adjacent land uses, um, corridors and gateways for the ingress and egress to the city, uh, required planning and growth, uh, the city's ability to provide public uh, health and welfare uh, services to the community. Uh, it's a, it addresses the city's needs to gain highway frontage and helps in, in, in relieving anticipated transportation issues. And all of this uh, has been heard by all of you before. It's been adopted. It was, it was codified in the City Council's 2016 Comprehensive Plan for Growth. Uh, so the allegation that they made that it doesn't follow the municipal practices, in, in my legal opinion, and my research of the case law, is just incorrect. <coughs> um, it, it most certainly does. Secondly, um, they request to be placed in the annexation plan under uh, resolution 99020, which was passed by a, a previous council, the annexation plan specifically states that the city council uh, plans only to annex areas exempted by section 43 of the local government code pursuant to 43.052H. And that is precisely what this annexation does. It annexes pursuant to 43.052H1. Um, so with that, um, I leave it to you to consider and um, decide to either accept the, the proposed petition and place them in a municipal annexation plan or deny it and, and we move forward. So, Council, you've heard what the, the uh, attorney has, has pointed out there that uh, this is merely a, a request 
from Cedar LLC to have uh, their property and, and, and to, to request for the petition that the attorney has talked about. And uh, he's told you, he's pointed out, and, and I think it's in your tablets there, pointed out the different uh, uh, versions of what we could do. It's, it's, it's not a public hearing. No, it's not. It's, it's not a, a public hearing. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you there. But no, this is this is not a public hearing. We're not. And can and, and council? We want to be careful. We're not discussing the annexation. We're discussing the request for the uh, uh, the request for the petition at this point. No, sir. It's not a, a public hearing. I'm sorry. So, council, do you have any questions or comments for the uh, or questions to the attorney on this? If none, I'll entertain a motion to uh, to cons to consider or not to consider this uh, adopting this resolution number 1915. Do I have either motion? Mr. Mayor. Councilman uh, Mobley. I make a motion that we reject the petition. So I have a motion to deny the petition. Do I have a second? Second. That was from, I got a second from Councilman Corgan. So we have a motion and a second to deny the said petition presented from Red Cedar LLC. Any more discussion on this council? Well, we will take a record vote. I'm sorry. My, my question is, Mayor, you know. You about lost it there. Go ahead. We, we, we looked at that property a couple, three years ago where they built a big building up on that hill. And did, did I misunderstand where he said he's that they would let us annex them in three years for no problem? Is that right or that's, wrong? That's not what that actually says. I mean, wanna... I've never heard that. I didn't say well, that. It says right, right here, three year deal. City for the three year deal. What does that arbitration mean? within our place agreement <laughs> to that's both the, the city and No, that, that's not what that says. No, that's, three that's years that's annex plan. Yeah. Placed and, newly. And, and we've already wrote that out. Right? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's just more long. So we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion, Council? We'll take a record vote on this. Councilman Corgan, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Allen, how do you vote? Nay. Councilman Wadley, how do you vote? Nay. Councilman Mobley, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Reiner, how do you vote? Aye. And I vote aye. So that request is denied. Our next one is to consider adopting resolution number 1916 regarding the request of Red Cedar LLC to enter into arbitration. Here again, Council, this is not on the uh, annexation. This is merely the LLC is requesting to enter into arbitration. And I'm going to call upon our attorney to kind of define what that what that means to us. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Council. Uh, <clears throat> This is a, for your consideration, a resolution either agreeing to enter into arbitration uh, or to uh, deny the request for arbitration. Uh, this is a procedural issue in nature. 43.052I of the Texas Local Government Code states that if no action is taken uh, that on the petition that we discussed in, in agenda item number seven, that the petitioner may it is permissive, not mandatory, may request the city and in, enter into arbitration. In my opinion, the request for arbitration was made prematurely. Uh, the city had not even been given an opportunity to, to take action or not take action when the request was filed. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it, it, the request for arbitration was uh, sent to the city in writing, so we placed it on the agenda for you to consider. Although we have taken action, you have taken action and you denied the petition uh, to be placed in the municipal, municipal annexation plan, you may still consider the request for arbitration. Um, accepting the request for arbitration will mean that we'll need to establish ti a timeline to arbitrate as well as appoint an arbitrator. Uh, effectively, that will stay the proposed annexation as to the, the Red Cedar particular property. Again, it is not mandatory that we enter into arbitration. Uh, if we don't, we continue forward with the annexation as is. Um, subsequent to that, if, if um, 
Red Cedar seeks any other remedies, they would have to do such through something called a quo warrento, and, and they are aware of that. Um, I've been advised by the county attorney and district attorney that uh, they have received requests for that from Red Cedar, and effectively what that is, is it means that Red Cedar does not have standing to bring a, a lawsuit against the city as to the annexation, uh, except through the quo warrento process, whereby they would have to um, convince the either the attorney general's office, the district attorney, or the county attorney to bring suit on behalf of the state to challenge any alleged uh, irregularities as to our annexation. So that would be the next process if they could convince one of those uh, one of those uh, offices of the state to file a lawsuit. Uh, otherwise, um, my recommendation um, to you is that there is no need for arbitration. As one, it was premature. Two, we have taken action on the petition, but it is for your consideration. Thank you, Jeremy. <clears throat> Let me. So, if the petition would have been, if the petition would have been approved, there would have been no item number eight. Is that what you're telling that, me? That, here? that is That's correct. There would be no need for an item eight. So, and I'm hearing that they placed both of these on the agenda tonight. I guess thinking it wouldn't get approved or, it, or what it was. I, I don't understand why they would do that, but probably maybe it would have taken a little more time, but that clears that up. But we are looking at this council. We, we do have the, uh, and they are, they, they, they can do a request for arbitration. There's a, it's not mandatory, but uh, they can go forward with that and they have put it on the agenda item. So you've heard from the count, you've heard from our attorney what that means to us. Is there any questions to the attorney on this particular item? Uh, I've got one. Or Chris, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Allen. Jeremy. Yes. Okay, let's say that they don't get the votes to do arbitration. Right. And they hire uh, some more attorneys and they sue the city. Hmm. What's that going to cost us? R well, roughly. But first of all, they don't have standing to sue the city. The case law is, is crystal clear on that. Uh, they would have to go to the district attorney, the attorney general, or the county attorney, and they would have to file a quo warranto lawsuit against the city. And that's if after they evaluate the case, they believe that there are any procedural ir irregularities as to the annexation. Um, we have complied county. with every timeline. We, we have uh, complied with all of our postings. We have had all of our required meetings. Everything set out in Section 43 uh, that is required for us to comply with, we have. Uh, what would it cost to litigate? I, I don't know the answer to that. If we, the lawsuit's over in three days, it might cost a couple of grand. If it goes for 10 years, it might cost 100 grand. I, I don't know. It's, it's Well, if you're so sure we're going to win, what's it going to hurt to give them arbitration? Why are they going to win? Well, if, if we're going to waste money to go to arbitration and time, efforts, and energies? I guarantee you that's not a fly the night company. And they've got money to hire attorneys, I promise you. Right. I, I understand, and, and I, my issue is not with the company or an individual or whomever it is. Process. My my job is to give you the, the legal analysis of this situation, which is, <laughs> one, the arbitration was requested prematurely because normally that's required when the, when the city does not take an action. Um, however, we have taken action as to, as to uh, uh, the petition. request for the petition. Um, but since they filed it, we, we put it on the agenda as well for you to consider, but it, it is not mandatory. It's not compulsory. We, we, we do not in any way need to agree. And, and the, 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 that would just be the go to arbitration to discuss the issue they put in their petition, which we, we've already discussed. and. and we un understand and believe that we have done everything that we need to do under the local government code. Okay, so if, if, if we vote no, and then on the 1st of June we come to our meeting and we vote to annex them, because they're part of it, right? That, correct. Then can they file a lawsuit against us to stop us or anything or not? They would have to file it through the quo warrento with the AG, the attorney general, the district attorney, or the county attorney would have to look at the case, evaluate it, and agree to file a, a suit for them. All right. Council, any more uh, clarification through the attorney here? Or Mayor. Any questions? Councilman Corgan. Um, who would 
if we decided to go to arbitration, who would bear the cost of the arbitration? Uh, initially, they would bear the cost of the arbitration, but <laughs> if they were successful in the arbitration, then we would bear it. Okay. If we win, it, they pay our our attorney fees, is that right? Yeah, initially, they, they bear the cost of arbitration. That's set out in Chapter 43 as well. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Councilman uh, Mobley. So, uh, Jeremy, you're, you're saying as far as procedurally, we're okay. There's no irregularities in the arbitration <coughs> process that you can see. Correct. Okay, our duty as a council is to look at the at the citizens of Granbury that live in the city of Granbury and protect their interests. <clears throat> From your standpoint, we're not exposed on this. Is that correct? I don't believe we are. No. What, what, is there any advantage? For the city of Granbury to agree to arbitration at this point? Uh, no advantage that I see. Okay, thank you. Council, any more discussion? Council, I'd like to make a motion to uh, suspend to, to suspend this motion and to uh, uh, the, the, suspend the rules and to uh, go into executive session. I'd like to make that in the form of a motion. Do I have a second? Second. And I got a second by Councilman Wadley. All in favor of going into executive session, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. The council at this time will go into executive session pursuant to 551-071 consultation with our attorney. At this time, we'll go into executive session. We re reconvene into open session. There was no action taken in executive session. We, re we will now reconvene into open session. We now move into item number eight on the agenda, which was tabled at, for a time. So we have a motion to take this to uh, take motion uh, item number eight back on the table. Entertain a motion to put that back on the table. I have that motion by Councilman Reiner. Second. I have a second by Councilman Allen. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Had it approved. Item number eight is to consider adopting resolution number 1916 regarding the request of Red Cedar LLC to enter into arbitration. Council, we've had some discussion on this. Are there any other questions for our attorney or our city manager at this time? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to either consider or to not consider the resolution number 1916, or, I'm sorry, to approve or not to approve resolution number 1916 regarding the request of Red Cedar LSC to enter into our arbitration. Mr. Mayor. Council. I'd like to make a motion to not approve resolution 1916. So I have a motion on the floor to not approve I, a resolution number 1916 regarding the request of Red Cedar. Okay, I'm sorry. Or deny the request for arbitration. To deny the request for arbitration. No, I stand corrected. We have a motion to deny the request for arbitration, which is resolution number 1916. Second. And we have a second by Councilperson uh, Wadley. Council, any more discussion on this item? Hearing none, Councilman Corgan, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Allen? Aye. Councilman Wadley? Aye. Councilman Mobley? Aye. Councilman Reiner? Aye. And I'm an aye. That is approved. That is denied at this time. At this time, I motion. At this time, I will now declare that the Granbury City Council is convened into open session, that all the members are present. The City Council will now once again go into closed session pursuant to the provisions of Texas Government Code in accordance with the authority contained in these following sections. Section 551071, consultation with our attorney. Section 551072, deliberation regarding real property. And Section 551087, deliberation regarding economic development negotiations. We will go into executive session. Taking an executive session. Council, are there any more items that you'd like to discuss? If no further discussion, the council meeting is adjourned.